Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on control chart series. This is in succession to our previous discussion on X bar R control chart. In this video, we will explore X bar and standard deviation chart. We use this chart when subgroup size is greater than 5, popularly known as X bar S chart. Samples used for this chart are collected at regular intervals. Let's look at a sample X bar S chart. X bar S chart is actually a pair of charts. X bar chart at the top plots the process mean, that is the X bar chart, and the bottom chart plots process standard deviation, which is the S chart. This combination is widely used to examine process stability, which means that we should interpret both charts to determine whether our process is stable. We should check the S chart first because the process variation must be in control to correctly interpret the X bar chart. If S chart is out of control, then the control limits on X bar chart might give inaccurate results and might show a fake out of control condition or fail to detect anything at all. It is important to know here that standard deviation is a better estimate of dispersion for larger sample sizes. Let's understand the control limits for X bar S chart. What we would require is K, the number of subgroups, N, the sample size of each subgroup, average of the ith subgroup, that is Xi bar, is equal to the summation of Xij divided by n, where j can take values from 1 to n. When we say Xij, it is the jth item of the ith subgroup. Center line of the x bar chart is x double bar because it is the average of the average calculated from each subgroup. To understand it better, let's visualize that we have five subgroups. Each subgroup has its own average. In X bar chart, average of these five subgroup averages will be designated as X double bar. So X double bar will be equal to the summation of Xi bar divided by K. There is the number of subgroups where I can take values from 1 to K. Range of the ith subgroup is Si and center line of the S chart, that is S bar, is equal to the summation of Si divided by K, where I can take values from 1 to K. So this was what we required. Now to calculate the control limits, let's look at the formulas here. Here we go. Here are the formulas that we use to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit for X bar chart and then for S chart where A3, B3 and B4 are control chart constants which have table values. We can get those values from available tables for control chart constants corresponding to the sample size that we have. This was all about X bar S charts. Now you know when to use an X bar S chart in your project and the idea behind it. Our next video in this series will be on discrete control charts. Stay tuned for it. Thank you very much for watching this video today. Feel free to share your comments or get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Please subscribe to this channel by clicking the red colored subscribe button while you watch the video. Cheers and have a good one.